close your eyes and watch your breath. Give the mind an anchor here in the present moment. But you want that anchor to be comfortable, otherwise the mind will try to cut the cord and run off someplace else. So watch the breath all the way in, all the way out to see what kind of breathing feels good now. Longer or shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Try to find the rhythm that feels good for the body, and it's also easy for the mind to stay focused on. And then try to maintain that, look after it. There's a lot of good things in life are like this. You, they don't seem that impressive to begin with. It's only when you take care of them that they begin to show that they're really worthwhile. A lot of the Buddhist teachings are like that as well. He talks about the virtues of generosity, the, what's good about observing the precepts, what's good about meditating. And at the very beginning, it seems like you're putting restraints on the mind, tying it down. Can't do this, can't do that, you have to give this up, you have to give that up. But he's not forcing anybody, he's just saying, look, if you really want to be happy, this is what you have to do. What kind of happiness do you want? Do you want long-term happiness or short-term? If you want long-term, it requires looking after things that may not seem all that impressive to begin with, like your breath right now, and have the mind stay with the breath. It may not be all that quiet right now, but after a while it will begin to settle in. As you give it time and you protect it, it will grow. We talk about having a happy new year, and here it is, that the year is still new. What's going to be happy about the year? It's not the things that happen to you so much. It's what you do. That's what creates the happiness that really lasts. But then again, you have to ask yourself, what kind of happiness are you creating with your actions, your thoughts, your words, your deeds? Long term or short term? Short term is easy to find. You just go out, go out on the street and buy something, get a little bit of pleasure. But if you want something that really lasts, okay, you have to be willing to work with the causes. It's like growing a crop in your field. There's a lot of work in clearing the field, getting everything ready, planting the crops, looking after them. But then at the end of the year, okay, you've got the crops, you've got the food. So you have to be willing to put in the effort first, and the results will come. So you look about the, think about the year, think about the past year, about things you felt that you could have done better. Make up your mind you want to work on something better for the coming year. As the Buddha says, you make a determination, there are four qualities you need. First you need to discernment to figure out, okay, what is a good aim to make for yourself, what's something you feel is attainable and stretches you, but not to the point of breaking, and really would make some good impact on your life. And then you have to be true to what you see. In other words, you see that to gain this you're going to have to do that and that and that. Okay, then you have to be true to that. Stick with it. You have to be willing to give up anything that gets in the way of that determination. And you have to make the mind at peace. In other words, be patient with things, because sometimes the causes for goodness take a while to grow. But after all, that's what you want is long-term happiness, right? You know, the short term, that comes and goes and usually leaves a better taste in, his mouth, in your mouth after it's gone. But the happiness that lasts, there's no bitter aftermath. It's just there and it stays and stays and stays. The more skillful you are at finding this happiness, the longer it lasts the more genuine well-being you'll find in it. So use some discernment. Think about what you would like to take as a determination for this year. Once you've discerned something is really good, okay, be true to it. Be willing to give up anything that gets in the way and keep your mind at peace all the way along. That's one of the reasons why we meditate, is to give the mind a sense of well-being as other things take a while to grow. Because the breath is right here. Once you get to know the breath well, it doesn't take that long to figure out what kind of breathing is good for you, and you settle in right there. And there's a sense of nourishment, a sense of refreshment right there that you can depend on, because otherwise the mind starts getting hungry. It wants the quick fix. But then the quick fix also, also often turns out to have lots of problems fo following in its wake. So you want something that doesn't create problems, a happiness that has good consequences. That's the kind of happiness you want for the new year. So choose your actions well. Be discerning in what you've got to improve, and be true to what you've learned, what you've observed. Because that's how the new year becomes a better new year. Every year they draw cartoons of the new year and the old year. The new year is a young baby. The old year is a beaten up old man. Well, this young baby, and if we're not careful, it's going to be a beaten up old man at the end of the year. Is that what you want? It may be that way for the rest of the world, but you don't want it for yourself. You want it to be a healthy person. So to make the year healthy all the way through, you've got to be careful about your actions. 
And that's how the New Year's Day is happy, even when it becomes an old year.